With his most recent film and feature documentary, American Hardcore, Paul Rackman revisited his music and filmmaking roots, having started his career making underground films and rock and punk music videos in the early 80s with bands such as Bad Brains. He later became one of the industry's top music video directors at Propaganda Films in Los Angeles, where he worked with such artists as Alice in Chains, The Replacements, Temple of the Dog, Sepultura, Roger Waters, Joan Jett, and The Bad Brains. He earned numerous nominations and awards for his music video work. He made his feature film directorial debut in 2000 with Four Dogs Playing Poker, starring Forrest Whitaker, Tim Curry, and Olivia Williams. He also directed several award-winning short films, most notably Drive Baby Drive, Memories, Home, Bang Bang, and Zoe XO. Paul is also a founder and East Coast director of the Slam Dance Film Festival. Please welcome Paul. So just expand on the, the bio a little bit. <laughs> um, I, I started my uh, filmmaking career really as a sophomore in college. I, I went to Boston University, and uh, I was there from 1978 to 82. And my roommate had become the Boston area kind of underground hardcore punk promoter. And, and this was really at the dawn of, of, of that movement. Um, you know, Black Flag had just done their, their first, Black, Black Flag had first done their first tour, and um, they influenced a lot of bands, and all of a sudden, all these kids from the suburbs uh, were doing shows in like basements, and uh, uh, VFW halls, and art galleries, and um, I was very taken by this. Um, I was one of the few college kids who was actually going to these shows. And um, my roommate kept on promoting me shows, promoting me shows, and, and that movement, as we'll talk about later, was very participatory. You really feel, felt like you wanted to be part of it. And I wasn't a musician. Um, I wasn't about to like, you know, start my own band. Most of these bands, these kids were like 15, 16, 17 years old. But I really admired um, the very uh, do-it-yourself nature of it. So I bought my first Super 8 camera, and I just started shooting a lot of these bands. And I was just shooting them and just stockpiling this footage. I didn't do anything with this footage until, like, 1984. Um, but that really, uh, you know, that's where I got that. I was bitten. You know, I wanted to, to make films. And what I did was I didn't change my major at Boston University. I, 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 mean, I was from New York. Uh, my, we were living in the West Village. And for two summers in a row, I went to NYU Summer Film School. And I uh, would go back up to Boston in the fall, and I started, uh, you know, just interning at these cable. This was also the dawn of public access cable. So all these TV studios were setting up, and it was free equipment, free access. I was working on feature film sets, and I was just doing as much as I could uh, without being in film school to get experience. And one of the things that uh, I got access to was all this equipment at these public access places. And I would take these, the, all this equipment and even these vans with like two, three cameras in them. And I would go to punk rock shows at night. And I would shoot these bands. Um, and one of the very first things I ever shot was, um, and this was after my first year at film school, at Southern Film School, was uh, Mission of Burma, this uh, punk band. Boston had their last show in the spring of 1983, and I, I captured that. And it was later uh, released and distributed like in, in the mid to late 90s. Um, so it was all about like going out there and finding a way to participate, finding a way to do it. Um, one of the things, now that was really my, my in into music video. Um, but I wasn't just doing music videos back then. I was doing a lot of like experimental little films. Because at NYU at the time, uh, you also got to play around with, with video, even back in the mid 80s, or early 80s. And video was like black and white porta packs. So you, you kind of got to, you know, you make a 16 millimeter film, you take out the porta pack, and you'd experiment. And everything was very influenced back then 
by uh, the video artists of the heyday, like Namjoon Pike, um, Kit Fitzgerald, um, you know, all the people who kind of led up to what Laurie Anderson later did. These were experimental video artists, which is actually kind of a big thing now. Mm -hmm. But these were kind of the, 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 the dawn of that era. Um, so I, I was making a lot of little, kind of weird little films like that, um, which were basically just playing with sound and picture. Just, just juxtaposing that. And that was a very, when I look back at it, you know, it was a very important thing to do, you know, of uh, not so much worrying about structure, trying to just find structure and sound and picture. Um, so that experience also fed into music video. Um, as music video was kind of going to be coming to television, um, MTV started in 1981, but before that, there were already all these kind of little local video shows on public access and stuff, and it was very experimental. So it really was this kind of marriage of, uh, you know, filmmaking or concert filmmaking and video art. 